probably take for granted that the game is played on a giant sheet of ice. Now, have you ever wondered how they make ice inside a warm building like this? I mean, I'm not even wearing a coat in here. So why doesn't the ice melt? Well, to find out, let's take a little trip back in time. Here's what the rink looked like before the ice was put in. Just a big slab of concrete. But what's interesting is not the concrete itself, but rather what's in the concrete. Running the entire length of the rink are more than 200 plastic pipes. Now the purpose of these pipes is to make the concrete so cold that it'll freeze water. So what's inside the pipes? Ethylene glycol, also known as antifreeze. The same stuff you put in your car's radiator during the winter. But how can this stuff make the concrete floor cold enough to freeze water? Well, to answer that, we first have to understand the concept of refrigeration. And what better place to start than in a refrigerator? The whole concept of refrigeration comes down to one basic principle. When a liquid changes into a gas, it absorbs heat. And if you've ever put alcohol on your skin to clean a wound, then you've felt this principle firsthand. That cooling sensation is the liquid alcohol evaporating into a gas and absorbing heat from your skin. And that same principle is exactly what your refrigerator uses to keep your food cold. Inside, a liquid refrigerant called Freon is pumped at high pressure into a chamber at the top of the fridge. As the liquid enters the chamber, it rapidly expands and evaporates into a gas. When it evaporates, the Freon absorbs heat from the air inside the fridge. And as the air cools, it absorbs heat from your food. So back at the rink, what we've got here is basically a big refrigerator. The only difference is that instead of using a refrigerant to cool air, we're using it to cool the antifreeze flowing through the pipes in the floor. So when you put it all together, here's how the system works. Before the antifreeze reaches the floor, it passes through a large refrigeration unit that cools the liquid. The cold antifreeze then circulates under the floor and starts to absorb heat from the concrete, which slowly brings down its temperature. This cooling process continues until the temperature of the concrete reaches about minus 9 Celsius. And if you look closely, you can see there's already a light frosting developing on the floor. Now we're ready to make ice. They start the process by using a sprayer to apply a very thin layer of water to the concrete. This fine mist freezes almost as soon as it hits the floor. Now the goal here is to make ice that's as hard as possible, since any cracks could cause a serious injury to one of the players. But how do you make hard ice? Allow me to interrupt for a second. To make hard ice, you need to avoid two things, impurities and air bubbles, both of which interfere with the bonding of the ice crystals to each other. Just take a look at this ice cube. See this cloudy area here? That's weak ice. It's caused by the minerals and other impurities found in tap water, as well as trapped air. And that's what they don't want at the rink. To avoid these problems, they first of all don't use tap water. Instead, they use water that's had all the minerals and impurities removed. Then they apply the water in thin layers because it helps prevent air from becoming trapped in the ice. And finally, they spray hot water because it contains less dissolved oxygen than cold water, which also means fewer air bubbles. After putting down the first few layers, it's time to paint the ice. Why paint the ice, you ask? Well, here's what the ice looks like when you don't paint it. Pretty dark. And here's what it looks like if you paint it white. They started painting the ice in the late 1940s because it made it easier for both the players and the spectators to follow the puck. After a couple of coats of paint, it's time to add the lines and logos. They use paper stencils to sketch out each logo, and then it just becomes a paint-by-number process to add the color. After the artwork is completed, it takes several more layers of water to get the ice surface up to its final thickness. 
So how thick do you think the ice surface is out there? This thick? No. This thick? No. Try about this thick. They play hockey in only about two centimeters of ice. You see, the problem is that ice is actually a pretty good insulator. So the thicker you make the ice, the harder it is for the pipes underneath to keep the top layer cold, which leads to soft ice. And the players don't like soft ice because it slows the game down. Of course, once the game starts, all that hard work gets chewed up in a hurry. The players' skates create snow and cut ruts into the surface. As well, the extra heat from the spectators and the television lights start to soften the top layer. Now we need a tool to fix the ice. And that's where this baby comes in. It's technically called an ice resurfacer, but most of us know it as the Zamboni. It's basically a scraper, a vacuum cleaner, and a rut filler all rolled into one. As the Zamboni circles the rink, a sharp blade at the back scrapes off the soft ice and removes the snow. The ruts are then flushed with water to remove any loose dirt or debris. And finally, a layer of warm water is put down to fill in the ruts and create a nice level surface again. Now, of course, hockey isn't the only thing that these arenas are used for. So what happens to the ice when a circus or a rock concert comes to town? Well, you've basically got two options. The first is to leave the ice right where it is. And in that case, what they do is cover the ice with hundreds of these insulated boards. Now, the benefit of this option is that once the event's over, you can just pick up the boards, clean off the ice, and you're ready to play hockey again. But sometimes you have to go to plan B. So how do you remove 20,000 liters of frozen water? Well, I had images of having to melt all that ice and turn the rink into a giant swimming pool. But the way they actually do it is a lot simpler. All they do is heat the antifreeze enough that it breaks the bond between the ice and the concrete floor. Then they push the ice into a collecting trough where it slowly melts and then drains away. And when they need to put the ice back 